Hello, this video is on hypothesis testing, specifically the chi-squared goodness of fit test, fitting observed data to a normal distribution, as shown here in the syllabus. The basic steps of a chi-squared goodness of fit test are step one, to state the null and alternative hypotheses. Step two, to calculate the expected frequencies. Step three, to state the significance level and to calculate the number of degrees of freedom. Step four, to calculate the value of the test statistic and the p-value. Step five, to state the acceptance and rejection criteria. And step six, to draw or make a conclusion using either the test statistic or the p-value. And to remind you of the acceptance rejection criteria, if the test statistic is greater than the critical value, or if the p-value is less than the significance level, then there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis, H0. Otherwise, we accept the null hypothesis. In this question, the times taken by eight year old children to solve a puzzle can be modelled by a normal distribution with a mean of 12 minutes and a standard deviation of 2.5 minutes. And we're asked to test whether the times of the 10 year old children come from the same distribution. So starting by stating the hypotheses. The null hypothesis, H0, is that the times for the 10 year old children do fit a normal distribution with a mean of 12 and a standard deviation of 2.5. The alternative hypothesis H1 is that the times for the 10 year old children do not fit that normal distribution. To calculate the expected frequencies we first need to calculate the probability for each category and we do this on your calculator. From the main menu if we select statistics and then press F5 for a distribution, and F1 for a normal distribution, and F2 for a normal cumulative probability calculation. To set up the distribution, if we scroll down and set the standard deviation to equal 2.5, press an execute, and set the mean to equal 12, and press an execute. Then scrolling back up, to the lower limit. So for the first category we can set a lower limit of zero minutes and an upper limit of nine minutes. Press in execute to perform the calculation, giving a probability of 0 0.1151. Repeating this process for the other categories so press an exit and for the next category getting a lower of 9 minutes and an upper limit of 11 minutes and press an execute to calculate the probability. For the third category setting the lower limit to equal 11 minutes and the upper limit to equal 30 minutes. For the fourth category, getting the lower limit to equal 13 minutes and the upper limit to equal 15 minutes. And for the final category, setting the lower limit to equal 15 minutes and the upper limit to equal a high number. So we can put 1 times 10 to the power of 99. As the sample size was 50 children, we need to multiply these probabilities by 50 to get the expected frequencies. So we'll go to the main menu and choose run matrix and type in the first probability 0 0.1151 multiplied by 50 and rounding 
to a whole number. So that's approximately six children. Repeating the process for the other categories, rounding to a whole number, and ensuring that the total is 50. Next, to enter the observed and expected frequencies into list one and list two on the calculator. So from the menu, if I go back to statistics, and then press F6 so I can delete the lists that are there by pressing F4 and confirming with F1 and scrolling across and repeating that process, deleting the contents of the lists. Now I'm ready to type in the observed and expected frequencies in. Okay, so in list one, that's 10. 11, 25, and 4 for the observed frequencies, and in list 2, 6, 12, 15, 11, and 6 for the expected frequencies. To calculate the number of degrees of freedom, I use the formula mu equals n minus 1, where n is the number of categories, so in this case, n is equal to 5. So 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. So there are 4 degrees of freedom. On the calculator, press in F6 twice to get back to the main statistics menu, selecting F3 for test, F3 again for a chi-squared test, and F1 for a goodness of fit test. And scrolling down and setting the degrees of freedom equal 4. Press and execute. And press and execute again to perform the test. Writing down the chi-squared test statistic and the p-value. Rounding in the values to three significant figures. As the critical value was not given in the question, we will compare the p-value to the significance level, which was 10%. 0 0.1. So as 0 0.079 is less than 0 0.1, in other words, as the p-value is less than the significance level, we conclude that there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And interpreting this conclusion in the context of the question, we conclude that there is sufficient evidence at the 10% significance level to suggest but the times for the 10-year-old children do not come from the normal distribution stated. 